Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, you know what? I didn't check. I am actually have this chus today of taking Manfred Goldberg, I think MBE, a wonderful survivor, to JFS, hopefully for helping our young children become much more aware of where they are and where we are. Um, okay, I'm just quickly listening to what Robertson told me, and I'll be one minute. Okay, so Rebbitson, Rebbitson, um, Silver um, with two Bishvat and whatever is running a little bit late. Um, so I'm just looking, I was going to say, Hayley, is there anybody here who, if I, oh goodness, you know, that might be a bit of a challenge. I think we've got to have your email as well. Let me just check. Is um, Let me check if Hayley's coming on because she can take host. Or if somebody wants to take host so you can mute um, people as they come on. And here is Robertson Silva. Um, Good morning, Robertson. Hi. Okay, so um, <laughs> Hayley um, hadn't answered me if she is on this morning. And I'm just looking at there. Dahlia, are you going to be there? Because I can give dolls, if you're going to be there, I can give somebody the code to um, just claim the host. No. Okay. Um, anybody else able to claim host for me? To watch when people come in to mute them. You want I'll do it. Nobody else can do it. I'll do it. So you've got my code, right? I'll give it to you. One O. Oh. One second. One second. Okay, what is it? One O O O eight six two. Okay, it works. Thank you very much. I'm leaving my screen on. I'll leave it on mute here, but I'm going to leave the screen on and I'm going to be carrying on around and having you with me. We should just have, I can't wait now because now I'm going to miss it. I've got to listen quickly for two bishvat. So wishing everybody a beautiful two bishvat. And I'm not going to be able to come on the end because we're in the middle of 300 young Jewish children because the scary thing is that today people don't remember who our Amalek was just 75 years ago. And uh, yeah, that's who we are. What are you doing with What are you doing with JFS, which is the our biggest Jewish um, uh, school here, the high, uh, high school. So they are close to 2,000 kids in the school. And um, <clears throat> there are over 2,000 kids in the school. And for Holocaust Memorial Day, um, we try and take speakers and we try and take survivors. Last year, I took with me Lily Ebert, who Kananahara is now 100, but unfortunately not able to go and do this anymore. And somebody by the name of Ivor Pearl, who just lives around the corner from, from me right over here. Um, and the children need the exposure. So Manfred Goldberg is a survivor. He's 94 years old, Kananahara. Yesterday, he was in Parliament most of the day. He's better at working his computer than I am. And um, and we take him in so he can tell his story and share and that the children can say that we, we we were in the presence of a real survivor. Um, and that is our challenge. You know, Elon Musk, the um, owner of Tesla cars this week, was in Auschwitz with his six-year-old son. So he could say that my child was actually there, non-Jewish person, but this is what we're trying to do today to make sure. And then um, next Sunday, I'm actually going to Poland for three days. And I always say, you never, you don't need to go. But uh, this will be my, you know, Mashiach's coming and either way, it will be my last time. I just, it's going to be my ninth or tenth time. I can't even remember. I think nine. And... Um, I like to go usually because we get to the Noam Eli Melech and they've changed the route this time. So I don't think I'm going to be doubling by the Noam Eli Melech, but we will. We have lots of other tzaddikim there. 
And um, yeah, so we hope to be able to inspire these young children. And the truth is that these kids know so little, even if they learn it in history, they know very little. We should just have good things. I mean, what school is that? It's called Jewish Free School. They call it JFS, Secular Jewish School. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For Cyrus Tobias. Be Masliach, be Masliach. Be successful. Amen. 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 Okay, let's talk a little bit about Sukhishvat because right now we're in the middle of it. And mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't remember really if we ever had uh, Yantif that we were in, in class with. So let's talk a little bit about Sukhishvat and the power of today. As we, it's written in the Sfarim, in our Jewish text. Oh, I have to mute everybody, one second. Uh, It's written in our Jewish texts that at the end of time, at the end of time, um, there's going to be so much darkness in the world, as we see. And we need to push into the world more light. We know that Chazal have told us many different uh, analogs and analogies and mishalim parables about what it's going to be like before Mashiach comes, which is, and we're in that kufa now, that we're in that time period now. And we know that one of the, you know, one of the parallels given is um, that there's a high, there's a tall tree and there's the fruit at the top of the tree, but no one is tall enough. No one is quite tall enough to get to the top of the tree. So instead, everyone is standing one on top of the other. And when you stand one on top of the other, then you can get to the top of the tree. And so right now, we always ask the question, how could it be that in our generation, we're so far from our emuna, our strength, our spiritual, our, our spiritual koach is, is really diminished relative to the power of the our ancestors. So how are we expected to bring Mashiach when our ancestors are so much greater than us? And Chazal tell us that we're just standing on their shoulders. We, we're, we're the ones who are going to reach to the top. But we're, we're, it's not us. We're standing on the shoulders of generations and generations of people whose entire life was so totally different than ours. Their, their aim and their purpose in life was so totally different than ours. Even just one generation ago, you had families who were very, very happy to go hungry just so that their boys should stay in yeshiva, just so that they should all stay from. People were, people, just one generation ago, didn't ever blink an eye when it came to Shabbos. And if they lost their job because they didn't work on Shabbos, that was just part of life. Like, they would never think to not, not to, to not to do that. So we're in a we're in a relatively weak generation. Sorry, we're in a relatively weak generation, and yet we're standing on the shoulders of great giants. Um, many tzaddikim have said that, you know, the the very beautiful story about the two brothers. Um, the two brothers, you know, one had a lot of children. One was married with a lot of children, and the other one, and he didn't have so much money, and the other one was not married, no children, and he had money. And so every night, the one who didn't have children and didn't have a wife, he would go to the other one's, the other brother's house, and he would put stuff there, food and money, whatever, because he knew that the brother needed more money than he did because he had a large family to feed. Meanwhile, that other brother felt so bad for his single brother that every night he would bring him stuff. And because he felt bad for him, he's alone, he's lonely. And this went on for a very long time. And so one night, it just so happened that they both came out at the same exact time and they met in the middle. And this one is full of gifts and the other one is full of gifts. 
And when they realized what was happening, that for years they had each been given the other one, they didn't they didn't suspect that. When they realized, they they dropped their gifts and they just hugged each other. And Chazal tell us that that was the site of the Beis Hamikdash. Where that happened was the eventual site of the Beis Hamikdash. So we have that story, and then we have the concept that the 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 the, the, the redemption is like a is like a day dawning. So if anybody's up early in the morning and you see the sunrise, you see, you never know what's, you have to look on the ca- on the calendar to see what time the sun rises because the sky gets, first it's dark, dark, and then it gets a little bit, you can see the contrast between the sky and the buildings. You can see a little bit of a contrast between the sky and the, and the ground. And then it gets lighter and lighter until the sun comes up. It's very gradual. It's very beautiful. It's very quiet. It's very peaceful. That's another way of describing how the Geula, the redemption, will happen. And another way is that it's going to be like a birth. And you know, a birth is not quiet and it's not peaceful. A woman giving birth is very noisy and very exciting and very active, very proactive. And really, all of that's going to happen at the same time. And we see that. So the same thing with this holiday of Tubishat. It's a simple holiday. No one's making Kiddush. No one is going to shul. I mean, they do. It's a regular day. But there's so much power behind today. And one of the greatest powers that there is, is recognizing our blessings. Because Hashem did not have to make fruit in the world. Tu is the holiday where we celebrate the fact that Hashem made fruit and fruit trees. And it's a custom to have many, many different types of fruit today and um, to make a bracha on them, to have, if you want, you can make a Tu Bishvat Seder. I just came from two of them, th- the, my third one actually, because last night I was a participant in the Inuka's Seder and today with the two in school. And so you can make a festive meal and have fruits and have wine and make the, and, and have, you know, some kind of a baked flour, you know, a flour substance food like cookies, cakes, whatever, bread. And, um, but to celebrate, to thank Hashem for the beauty in life because fruit is dessert, right? Fruit is not a regular part of the meal. We have to make a blessing on the fruit at the end of a meal because it's an addition to a meal. And so the idea is that Hashem gave us our needs and that he gave us our luxuries. How much, how much, I have a friend, she lives in, in a very, very big house. She has a very, very big house and she uses it for Hachnas' Orachim. She uses it for hosting people. And she and it's here in Eretz Israel. And um, there are very few big houses. Ha- I mean, there are, there are certain people who have big houses in Eretz Israel, but this is a private house with a big driveway and a big dr- garage and a huge, I think she has seven bedrooms and five or six or seven bathrooms. And it's huge. It's very, very big. And there's a reason why they got that house. I'm not going to go into it. But she uses it. She uses it for guests. She hosts and hosts. Anyway, she told me that if it were, she's a widow. She's a very young widow, actually. And she told me that if it was up to her, she would not need any of this. She'd be fine with a, you know, a bedroom, a, a living room, and a kitchen and a bathroom. What does she need this for? But she needs it for other people. So the truth is that we would be fine with Hashem giving us just bread and water and an occasional egg or so. But Hashem gives us a vast bounty of food and colorful food and sweet tasting, juicy food. And today is the day to say thank you for all of the luxuries. So I just said it for all of us. Thank you, Hashem, for all the extra luxuries that you gave us in our life, that we can see, that we can hear, that we can feel that we are alive that we're living in this incredible generation. And I, I saw a clip of a little boy. I'm sure you're seeing all the same clips that I see. A little boy, his father was without a yarmulke, and the little boy was also without a yarmulke. His father's in his uniform, and the boy's standing by the door. He looks like a five-year-old boy, and he's standing by the door, and he won't let his father go back to the army. And his little boy saying to the father, but it's Shabbat. It's Shabbat is, is Chofesh. Shabbat is a day of rest. You can't go to the army on Shabbat. And the, and the father's trying to explain how you can't explain to a little child. He doesn't want his father leaving the house 
And he has a perfect excuse for the father. It's Shabbos, it's Shabbat. And it didn't look like it was a family that, you know, you, don't, you can't tell by people's appearances, but but the little boy, that was his argument. He, he was sure that he gave his father an unbreakable argument. It's Shabbat, you can't go, it's a day of Chobosh. The little boy said, I don't have school on Shabbat. You're not allowed, the army's not allowed to call you on Shabbat. It's a day of Chobosh, free day, a day of a day of rest. So, so today is Tu Bishvat. So make the most of it. Um, eat some fruits. Make the proper blessings on the fruits. Thank Hashem. Pray over every food that you eat. I don't know if any of you have ever participated in a Tu Bishvat Seder. Um, they, when I was younger, I come from a religious background, Baruch Hashem. When I was younger, we never had a Tu Bishvat Seder. I never heard of a Tu Bishvat Seder. The sum total of our Tu Bishvat was always the same, and all of the people my age had the same joke when they say a Tu Bishvat cl cl class. They all have the same joke, and the joke is that how did we know that it was Tu Bishvat? Because we didn't really, even though I was religious, but we didn't pay so much attention to the Hebrew calendar. But maybe the teacher would write it on the board, but we didn't really pay attention as kids. And um, and the sum total of my knowledge of Tubishat was that the lady from the PTA, two ladies from the PTA, Parent Teachers Association of the school, would come into every classroom and they would distribute to every child a plastic bag full of raisins and nuts. And they would put in a, a piece of uh, carob, bucks, or they would call it, which was really inedible. And we ended up throwing those boxes all over the room. And they also put peanuts in, which was not you know, the right bracha anyways. It was a thing. It was like a silly, you know, it wasn't in any way. But now we're back in the land of Israel. And and we're very aware of, of um, the farmers because the farmers in the South have suffered terribly. And we know that people like you from Chuslars are coming and volunteering to plant and to take off to harvest Really, they needed more more help harvesting the crops that were already that had already grown, and they didn't want them to be spoiled, to be thrown out and spoiled. And so, we're very aware now of the fruits of Eretz Israel, and just at the land of the land of Israel. I think that here we're living, we live here, Baruch Hashem. But I think that you know, all every Jew all over the world, including in Eretz Israel, is much more valuing the land itself, and the privilege of living here, and the necessity for a Jew to live here, and the absurdity of the way the world looks at us, and the absurdity of all of the mindless, uneducated and brainwashed um, people in the world who have no idea what the reality of life is. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that came to me. You know that there are people in this world who are living a godless life. God is not in their life. Maybe once in a while they'll say, you know, thank God, or I don't know. But it's not God. God is the center of our life, our whole life. Us as, as awake Jews, Hashem is the center of our life. Torah, Hashem is communication to the world. And halacha, Hashem is decide, telling us how he wants us to live. That's the center of our That's our whole life. And it's so clear to us what the truth is. And to people who are, that's not clear to, they're living in a delusion. But when the Mashiach comes, one of the ways to understand how that's going to be is the following. When Mashiach comes, the whole world will be God conscious. And just like we are conscious of the reality of what's going on in the land of Israel, and we're conscious of the fact that the, the entire, this entire PR of Israel is so poor. The world doesn't understand us, doesn't have the correct vision of how we are and what we what kind of life we live. As we're so clear about the truth of our being here and about the violence and the Nazism of Hamas, it's so clear to us because we live here, we live it, we see. We see how Arabs live here. We see the opportunities that the secular Israeli government has given them, ridiculous opportunities. And all of that. So, but as clear as our truth is, so too when the Shiikh comes, the clarity that the tzaddikim have right now, 
is going to hit us. Now we would be we would do ourselves a big favor if we would um, already live in the mindset of the tzaddikim, because we're going to get there. So you want to get there, and you don't want to hit yourself on the head and say, I can't believe I didn't know that. I can't believe I didn't see that before. Our consciousness has to be, what does Hashem want for me right now? What is the halacha right now? How am I supposed to live my life right now? That's our con- It has to be like that, because that's truth. Just like people are living in lies and they're demonstrating against Israel, so too we are also living on a certain level in lies. And we are not maximizing what we're, we're not living the way we're supposed to live. So Tu Bishvat, the 15th day, Chamisha Asar Bishvat, the 15th day of the month of Shvat, is a day where we have to rethink. And I'm, and I'm just verbalizing it for you. You can all say Amen, Amen, Amen the whole time. We want to rethink our priorities. We want to bring God more into our life. We want to be deeper Jews. We want to be more, more um, I'll say, delicious Jews. We want to be more devout Jews, devout Jews. We want to be more loving Jews. We want to be more Jewish Jews. We want all that. That's what Tu Bishvat allows us to restart. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, and I hope that it's going to be manifest in the physical world. So we have a teaching that the month of Tishrei, the six winter months are called the one, the month of Simsum, of constriction and of judgment. The six winter months are beginning Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Tebe, Shvat, and Adar. Okay, that's the six winter months. However, the strongest din, the strongest judge, judgment is Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, and Teves. Until Rosh Chodesh Shvat, and according to Hillel, Beis Hillel, until, until Tu Bishvat. Until Tu Bishvat, we have a certain element of justice, judgment in the world. And who can stand up to judgment? None of us. And that's why this war broke out now. You know, I'm sure you've read that the war was supposed to break out last year, Pesach, this past Pesach. But they got all their logistics messed up. And so they pushed it to Sukkot. They wanted it to break out at the Seder night. That's what their plan was. Instead, they know our holidays. They know our schedule. They know our calendar. They know our 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 celebration days. And they wanted it to be at the Pesach Seder. They were going to invade this. Whatever happened was supposed to happen at the Pesach Seder night. And it was supposed to happen th- throughout the whole entire country, north and south. And that Hashem saved us. I mean, really, we should every single day say, thank you, Hashem, that we're still alive. It was, their original plan was that Hezbollah Yimach Shemam in the north and Hamas Yimach Shemam in the south were supposed to attack on the same exact day. The south and the north and the middle of the country would have been attacked by bombs, by uh, missiles, and we would have been in one day destroyed. I think they had a three-day plan to destroy Israel. And it was a three-day plan that was not stupid. It wasn't a stupid plan. These are not stupid people. They have generals, they have they have army people, they have, you can even do it with artificial intelligence. With AI, you could plan a war to destroy Israel. And Hashem stopped it. Hashem made the plans not work. Hashem made their logistics for last Pesach somehow messed up. And then Hashem made it when they did it now, Sukkot's time, the north, the Hezbollah wasn't ready. They And the Hamas wanted to do it early because they have that big music festival in the south. That big music festival, the bottom line is, saved Israel, saved our lives. Those kids, see, the ones who were killed and the ones who didn't, weren't killed. The thousands of people who went to that music festival, we thought, oh yeah, Shanda is so terrible, so terrible, a music festival on, on, on Shabbos, Simchas Torah, how could that be? It's such a terrible thing. The bottom line is that they all saved the land of Israel, just to show you how we don't know how to evaluate things. Of course, that, uh, you know, they shouldn't have had it. But look how Hashem did it. Hashem showed us how important it is to love every single Jew because they saved the whole Israel. They saved the whole Israel. Because had they not made that music festival on that day, then Hamas wouldn't have hurried up, speeded up. They thought they could get more people killed. They speeded up their plans. Hezbollah in the north wasn't ready, didn't agree to it, and then the whole plan fell apart. So Hashem, thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, on Tu Bishvat, we're starting all over again. We're starting fresh, and the din has finished. 
So it's a day of transition from Din into Rachamim. And the Rachamim really begins in Nisan. Of course, Pesach, the month of Pesach, is when the official Rachamim, the official um, half, you know, the, sun, the year which is divided into the winter months and the summer months, summer months are officially beginning in Nisan. But the transition is happening today. So I hope that from today on, we're going to see amazing good news. I really hope that we'll see in the physical world. We know in the spiritual world, everything has shifted already in the spiritual world. We want to filter down here into the physical world. And that's my hope. And that's why we want to thank Hashem today as much as we can. And we want, we want to attach ourselves to the righteous people in this world. We, and we want to declare that we are Shema Yisrael. We're declaring to the Jewish people, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. I have a friend. I hope that she doesn't see this video. <laughs> she might not. I have a friend who sometimes, she, she's at a certain age where sometimes she repeats herself. You, ever, you know you know people, you know that kind of situation? So um, sometimes she'll tell the story and she'll say, did she ask, like, did I say that already? Did I tell you that story already? And, uh, you know, nobody wants to say, yes, you did. But sometimes it happens. And she says, it doesn't matter. Because you know what? How many times a day could we say Shema and Hashem loves it? See, if you, if you repeat something again, it's okay. Hashem loves it. People have to learn to expect, to understand, and to, and to work with a person like that. So we're hoping that today is going to be a very big day. And it's going to transform into something good. I must tell you that just now as I'm giving this class, and now it's 10.30 in the morning in the UK, but it's 12.30 here. We had a very rainy day yesterday. We've had, we've had cold, rainy days the last day or two. And today was also began cold and rainy. And now, Mamish, the sky, I don't know how long it's going to last, but Mamish, the sky is a beautiful blue, a beautiful Jerusalem blue sky with puffy white clouds, not rain clouds. So we see even that, even the weather today in the middle of the day on Tzubishma, it switched into something more comfortable. I was privileged to be last night by the Yanuka, and I'd like to share, you know, you can always, at Tehillim class, anybody could give. Really, you know, every one of you can give a Tehillim class, because every one of you has been affected by Tehillim and has your own personal take on how Tehillim is. But not everybody can say what I'm, you know, can share with you going to the Yanuka. He's the sounds like of the generation. So I was privileged to go last night after a lot, a lot of minios, a lot of things that that almost stood in the way. I almost didn't get there several times, including having a traffic accident on the way there too. One was before the woman who picked me up came to my house, and the second was while I was in the car with her. Half of her car just fell down. It was really something, whatever. <laughs> so, Baruch Hashem, we made it. She made it back. But I want to just tell you what he said last night, because I want to share this with you. So first of all, he told the story of the very, very important power of saying the bracha out loud. I don't know if I told you the story. I, I couldn't have, because it just happened this week. A boy, a man came to him in uh, this past Monday when they had you know, reception, when they could, when he receives people. And the man, they, they recorded it. The man said to him, he came to say thank you to the rabbi. He, and what was the story? This man, a young man, his oldest son is two years old and doesn't start and wasn't talking. And they were very worried about him. He was two years old, didn't say a word. You know, wasn't making sounds. They were scared. And they were trying to take him to doctors or whatever, but he came to the rabbi for a bracha first. And the rabbi said to him, just you and your wife, be very careful to say all the brachas on food before you eat out loud. That's called birkat nehenin the blessings on benefits, on enjoying enjoying this world. In other words, the bracha before you eat and before you drink and before you inhale fragrant spices, all the brachas of enjoyment and pleasure, say them out loud. Don't say them quietly under your breath to yourself. Say it out loud in your house, at home. Say it, make, make that your practice. So the man, I don't know when he, I don't know how old his son is now, but he came back to the rabbi on Monday night and he said to him, Rabbi, Remember you told me to say the brachas out loud because the son, my son, his son wasn't speaking. He said, we began, he and his wife made a commitment to say the blessings on food out loud in their house. And he says, my son doesn't stop talking. He doesn't stop. So he went from not talking 
a word to not stop talking. And it's not that he's just prattling silly things that little children say. He says such profound thoughts. A little kid, you know, little kids can have very profound thoughts, especially if you keep them away from television, you keep them away from screens, you keep them away from school. All of those things uh, sabotage child's <clears throat> ability to think creativity, creatively. But this is a religious family. They're always talking about Hashem in the house. So the little kid, he's not just talking, but he's talking beautiful Hashem, loves us, and all that kind of stuff. Those kind of significant speeches, significant speaking. So today you're going to talk about saying brachas out loud. Ladies, please do it. Come on. You can push yourself. Anytime you eat, and I'm talking to myself also, anytime we eat anything, we're going to first say the blessing out loud. And, and hopefully if there's people within hearing distance, they'll say amen. Because when you say a bracha and someone says amen, it's exponentially more powerful. Not just that, but we're going to be very careful. I'm sure you all are. I'm just going to say it. We're going to be very careful with eating only the highest level of kosher. And the highest level of kosher costs more money. It's true. But the rabbi said, eat more fresh fruits. The highest level of kosher means we're talking about meat and poultry and fish and dairy and and, and baked goods and pro, pro, products. But he said, it's much easier. It's so easy. And so that you have to have the highest level of kosher. But you don't have to pay so much money because just eat more fruits and vegetables. That's what he said. It was so cute because the ladies know that I try to eat healthy. So they were all looking at me like nodding. He said, eat more healthy food, fruits and vegetables, raw. Uh, I'm not live, not dry. He said, dried is also okay if you don't have, but if you have dried fruits and vegetables, he didn't say this, but I'm going to say it to you. You have to hydrate it by soaking it in hot water and boiling water until it puffs up a little bit and gets more hydration. Otherwise, ladies, you don't want wrinkles. And when you have, when you eat dried up fruits, it makes your skin dried up because the body needs to put water into the fruits in order to digest it. So hydrate your dried vegetables and your dried fruits if you're going to have them. But brachas and kosher and also belief, he said, believe. You have to believe that you can renew yourself today. Today is a Rosh Hashanah. It's a Rosh Hashanah that we don't have to say in shul the whole day and we don't have to, you know, we're allowed to use technology, we're allowed to use electricity, etc. But it, indeed, it's a Rosh Hashanah. It's a new beginning. So we're going to all believe that we can begin again on any level. Please, ladies, if you're not living a healthy lifestyle, physically healthy, so commit today. Start a new lifestyle. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to have a healthy mindset. I'm going to have a positive mindset. I'm going to be a demonstration of good health to my friends. What's the biggest advertisement for good health? Is a woman who eats healthy and she has... And she looks healthy. That's the biggest advertisement for living a healthy lifestyle. Go take a walk. Go do some exercise. If you're on a walk, go take a walk and put headphones in your ear. Don't turn them on, but put headphones in your ear. Make believe you're on a phone call and talk to Hashem. People, when people are walking in the street and they're talking, we know that they're on the phone because they have a thing in their ear, right? They have a white, uh, whatever, microphone, whatever you call it, earphone. So you walk, go take yourself a walk. I don't know what the weather's like in the UK right now, but take a walk, put your earphones on, and just talk to Hashem. We have to come closer to Hashem because we want when Mashiach comes that our sensitivity levels are strong are high. Because when Mashiach comes, we're gonna we're gonna be broadcast with a huge amount of holiness, and we want to have the, the vessels to receive it. Did you ever have a class? that you went to, and people were inspired in that class, and you just walked out feeling nothing. Sometimes that happens. If other people were inspired in that class and you were not, it doesn't mean that the class, it's not the fault of the teacher or the class. It's the fault of the person who was not inspired. I don't want to say fault, but, it's a, but the situation is that the person who heard the class didn't have a big enough vessel to receive the light, the Torah, the enlightenment in that class. I listen to Shiram and sometimes I have to turn them off and I say, I'm, Hashem, I, I want to be ready. To, I, want, I wish I could, I wish I could, you know, Absorb that. I wish I could be that. I wish I could be in that place. And if I'm not, if there's negativity attached to it, then if it's a if it's really a reliable teacher, of course, 
then you have to make a bigger vessel. How do you make bigger vessels to receive godliness and to appreciate godliness? How do you make them? By making a bracha out loud. It's very simple. The brachas, the, the, the tractate of brachas is the first tractate in the Talmud. It's easy. Make a bracha out loud. You just expanded your soul. You just expanded the receptivity of your soul and the ability for, the, for your soul to enjoy spirituality. Make a bracha out loud. When you go to the bathroom, so all day long, if you're eating and drinking, then you're also going to the bathroom. So make that bracha out loud. I have a friend, and her daughter is Nizra Fushlema. And so she works in one of the schools I teach in. And so I, I was, uh, whatever, she, I was in the hall, and she just exited the bathroom. And she said the bracha, Asha Yatsar, from exiting, the, from after using the facilities. And she said it very, it took her a long time to say it. Now, I know that her daughter needs her a full shlema, And I assume that she was saying that with the, in, with the intention of also sharing the, sharing the um, power of that bracha with her daughter. And I said something to her. I said, wow, that took you a long time. And she said, it was a, it's a good bracha to say slowly. It's, one, it's an important bracha to say slowly. So say that bracha out loud. What did you do? You just ensured your health. You expanded your soul's vessel and capacity for spirituality. You brought more holiness into the world. You brought Mashiach closer. From what? From saying a bracha when you left the bathroom. So I, 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 I want to encourage us because today is a brand new beginning. And you know what? How many times did we begin? We began so many times. I said I said this year already last year. We began doing brachas better. We, were, we began saying Asha Yatsa better. We began being more careful with our lifestyle. But we somehow we forgot about it. So now we're beginning again. Because Rosh Hashanah, La Ilanot, or La Ilan, is, it's, a, it's about new beginnings. And the Rav said last night, he said, you have to believe that you can begin again. You have to believe that Hashem, every time you try to begin again, Hashem says, good for you. Start again. And also he said so many times, I was, I don't know, maybe something bad is about to happen, Chas Hashanah. But he just kept saying over and over again, don't let anything break you. Don't let anything get you down. Don't let anything get you pessimistic or depressed. Nothing. Don't ever break. As he kept saying again and again, yesh tikva, there's hope. Yesh tikva, there's hope. You have to realize, you have to focus on the positive. There is hope. He said it again and again and again. I have to, I, I came home very, very late last night. And I had to leave to teach this morning very, very early. So I didn't get a chance to speak to any of the women who were there, any of the women who can we can compare notes on how we understood the shear. But I want to ask them, like, did you notice how many times he said that? And he was in such a good mood. He does that when he wants to put other people into a good mood. And then he just played music for half an hour. And he fixed all of our souls. So if you want your soul fixed, Go on YouTube, find the soul, find the music of the Inuka, just play it. Close your eyes and say, Hashem, this is the music of a tzaddik. And Chazal tell us that the music of a tzaddik has the power to cleanse the soul. I have a student, she's a doctor of Chinese medicine, and she has a very, very, pretty secular um, uh, you know, uh, practice. In other words, she is very religious, but her clients, you know, she does a, she does a, she's a woman. And she does a lot of um, cleansing for women who've gone through all kinds of womenly issues. And anyway, she puts the Inuka's music in the background of her clinic because she feels as she's a secular and she trains in the most secular Chinese medical school in Israel. She herself is a religious woman. And they tell them, put on music in the background. So she puts the Inuka on. And people say that it's the most healing music for them. Anyway, a new beginning, ladies, a new beginning. We'll try again. We'll start again. We'll try again. How many women have told me I started a diet for the hundredth time? This diet I started a hundred years ago, and I, and, I, and I broke this diet. I broke that diet, whatever. So start all over again. Start again. Hashem gave you a new life. Hashem gave you more da'ani in the world. So start again. But it's, I'm sorry, who did you um, who would, did you go to see um, yesterday? I went to, I went to the Inuka from Shlomo Yehuda Be'eri. Oh, very different guy in this generation. He's my rep. He's, he's half my age. 
He's a young baby. He's uh, not quite half. Maybe. He's uh, almost. Um, he's in his 30s. He's in his young 30s. A wonderful kid. He's an unusual soul. Ask already the Chavi. They they know me. I, I've been quoting for a very long time. Listen, David Amelach. He was also young when he started his life, in, you know, of, of influencing people. He was eighteen, eighteen, and um, some say he was twenty-eight. Some say when he became he became king, twenty-eight, young. It should all be well and be safe and be successful. Okay, where are we up to in Tehillim here? We're up to you. We were, so this is a very long introduction, the majority of the year, But it's two bishvats. You have to celebrate. We have to celebrate together. Did anybody uh, keep an esrog from last year? You can make a bracha. You can make it into candy. I actually had last night because one of the women, because it's a funny thing. There was a woman who brought esrog uh, how do you say, candied esrog? She took the esrog and she, whatever she did to it, the es- they say not to do that because the esrogam are full of uh, pesticides. Especially they make them, they want them to grow a certain way, so they make them full of, full of chemicals. And so they've been saying for years already, don't eat the esrog, the outside of the esrog. So somehow she peeled the whole outside layer and she cooked it and whatever she did, I don't know what she did. She probably put in tons of sugar. I took literally maybe a a one thirty-sixth of a teaspoon, like tiny on my finger, it's a little, tiny little dab. But um, why did I do that? Because she, this lady, brought estro jelly to the to the tubisha thing last night, and she put a little bit on the on the rabbi's table that he should have, and then she kept some for the lady section. And normally I don't normally I don't eat it, but she he's she just took out the estro, and then he said on the t- he said. Well, do we have any estrogen this year? Just exactly when she took it out. So everybody thought that that was a sign. We all had the estrogen, a little piece of estrogen. Says if you eat estrogen on Tubishvat, you live, you live out the year. So I don't know if that means till your birthday or uh, or uh, till next year Tubishvat. My birthday is uh, coming up this this upcoming week. My birthday is right after Tubishvat. So. Uh, but it's a good guarantee to live, period. It's just to be alive. Okay, so that's why all this Tu stuff. Uh, you should have a good day in Tu You should have a meaningful day. We should really start all over again. We should see that Hashem should love us. We have to love Hashem so much. We have to love Hashem. It's so hard when things are going. It's so easy to love Hashem when things are easy. And it's hard to love Hashem when He gives a little squeeze that's too tight. But we love you, Ashim. We're thanking you, Ashim. One of my students told me, I, I told the story in one of the s- classes today, uh, you know, the colors of the fruits. If you Because we had seders, so we gave them all kinds of fruits and so many colors. And here in Eretz Israel, people, they, they bring in, because, you know, the whole country is celebrating Tumishvat. They bring in all the most exotic fruits. I don't know if they color them or if they're naturally like that. We had pink, pink dragon something. And we had deep purple, looked like a kiwi, but it was deep purple, crazy colors, and bright oranges and bright yellows and all of that stuff, and bright greens. And so, and, and passion fruit, we have now passion fruit, they brought it. Anyway, so um, I, I told the, the girls that I get very emotional whenever on my, my YouTube, whenever I see this, these clips of someone who's colorblind and they bring him those special, I told you this, they bring him those special glasses and he sees colors for the first time and they all start to cry and he can't believe the world is so beautiful and all of that. And I had that experience with my mother. She should rest in peace and be a good debater for all of us. That when she had her cataract operation, so she said the same thing. She, she looked around and she said, it's so beautiful. I forgot how beautiful the world is because her cataract was clouding her vision. It's so beautiful. As she kept saying, it's be- look, look, it's beautiful, the green, and look at the color. She was, she, I mean, she knew the colors because she wasn't colorblind. She just had a cataract for, you know, she forgot over the years how vivid the colors are. And so one of my students in the class said that her father is colorblind and her, and her, her uncle 
the two brothers, her father and his brother, are both colorblind. And they brought, they bought them both those glasses. Now she said her father saw like semi-colors, like shades. He would like get confused of blues and purples and reds and oranges. He saw something, but her uncle didn't see anything. Everything was gray and black and white and whatever, those kinds of shades. And she said her father, her father was excited, but her uncle was crying. They had a whole, they took a move, you know, they take pictures of him. He was crying and crying. He couldn't believe the beauty of the world. That's what Tubi Shrine is. It's to see also the beauty in every person. Let's see the beauty in at least one part of the uh, Right? Are we up to you? Somebody tell me. We're in I and Aleph. We're in 71, chapter 71. And I think I have marked in my Yud. thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yud. okay, so at least we'll do one part of Thank you. So, ki amru ayvayli v'shomrein avshi no asu yachtav v'lemor amnezu tu b'sukin. Elokim azavo ritfu b'sivsu ki ein masil. My enemies, ki amru ayvayli, my enemies said about me, this is what Zavad Malach is saying, because remember this whole entire chapter is about Mashiach. Chapter 70, 71, 72, all about Mashiach and Geulas. That's what we're learning them. So, um, Ki amru evayla, my enemies, said about me, what they say about me? And those people who were against my soul, they were trying to trap my soul. What did they say about me? No, they came together to make an etzah, to make advice against me. Just like the whole world now. In the Hague and in the UN, the whole world is going... Uh, Look at that. Very beautiful, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. See, Karen is saying that she's... Did you write that to everybody? Karen is saying she's an optician, and her job is making people see clearly the beautiful world. So look at that. What an amazing job. I have also a job like that. I'm also trying to help people see the world and myself to see the world and Hashem in the world. So all these people, these enemies, are gathering together, and they're trying to figure out a plan against me, against the Jewish people. And, what, and what's their excuse, or what's their reason for doing that, or what's their what's the what is that which gives them takes away the fear of planning and, and plotting against the Jewish people? Because they say Elohim Azavo, God has abandoned them. Read Suhu, chase after them, and you'll catch them. Ki ain Matzil, because no one's going to help them. Now, David Mel said this about himself. He said. The reason that he has enemies is because people don't judge him correctly. People judge him as being bad, as being weird, as being different. They they judge him improperly. And they're saying God doesn't, he's not with, God's not with him. And therefore we can attack him. Now that was David's personal enemies because you know, he had personal enemies. It's hard for us to understand because David is Mashiach. How could it be that people didn't see the greatness of his soul? Yeah, Hashem made it like that. Because Hashem wanted David Amelch to be pursued and to go through that, what he had to go through, to give us to heal him and to give us the ability to get through the Golas, to get through the exile. So David Amelch had personal enemies. I hope none of us have enemies. But we have personal enemies. But we certainly have national enemies. The whole world is against us. The whole... Part, the whole world that's on the side of evil is against us. And they're going to they're gonna be destroyed. The immorality is against us. The, the world of immorality is against us. You think Hashem is going to let them continue? How much longer is, is Hashem going to let them continue with all this transgender stuff and with all this trying to brainwash children to make them confused and to make them not trust their families and their parents and to trust politicians and to trust strangers and to trust strangers to tell them that, by the way, you could be a girl, you could be a boy, you could be an elephant if you want. So those are our enemies. And they, but what are they grasping onto? They're grasping onto the fact that they don't understand exile. We also sometimes don't understand exile. Hashem put us in exile because he wants us to teach the whole world about God. But the Goyim think, oh, you see, they were scattered all over the world and we were able to attack them here and attack them there. So God abandoned them. By the way, that's the whole Christianity is based on that. And the whole Islam is based on that. Christianity says, yeah, the Jews were, once were the chosen people, but they lost it. Islam says, yeah, the Jews were once the chosen people, but they lost it. 
And the fact that Hashem says in Torah over and over again, I'm never going to exchange you for, for anybody else, they conveniently overlook that. So that's what they're saying. We can attack him because Hashem left him. Look, look what happened to World War II. Didn't look like Hashem. The Nazis, that's what they would taunt the Jews. They would say, where's your God? Where's your God? And they and we would scream at Ani Mamin Ben Munashlema, even as we were going, getting killed. We don't care. We don't we don't understand God. If we understood God, we would be God. We would be God. But God didn't abandon us, and here we are, fruitful and multiplying. 75 years later, we have our own country. We have our own everything. We're independent. Okay, we have to fix the government. We do. It's, and we're gonna fix the government. You're gonna see, we're gonna fix it. It's gonna be fixed. They're gonna all we're gonna fire them all. And we're going to rehire only the ones that are good. But the world said God abandoned the Jews, and they were they were overjoyed. The the Catholic Church, Yimach Shemam, the Pope Yimach Shemam, and all of that, and all of those guys, they were rejoicing in World War II, even though, of course, they said politically correct statements or whatever. And some individuals had some individual Christians were incredibly moral, and we call them the righteous Gentiles, and we have a place for them in the in the world to come, and we have a place for them here in Israel also. But the majority of them were happy. They were saying, yeah, good, finish the Jews, and that will be an, a, a nail in the coffin of the Jewish people, and it will promote Christianity. And the Muslims said the same thing. It will promote the Islam. And here we are. We, show, we Hashem says, no, 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 don't worry. My kids, you're my kids. I'm taking care of you forever. And here we are in this gorgeous country. Gorgeous, gorgeous country that is uh, is superior in every way to any other place in the planet. So they think that so what they think that they can run after us because we were abandoned by Hashem. 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 So because of that, because they think that you ran away from me, because they think that you abandoned me, Hashem. Now I have a reason to say you have to stay with me. Al many. Make sure that you help me because it's a chil Hashem. It will be a desecration of Hashem's name if you, if they are able to say, "Look, God abandoned them." So you have to help me, even if I'm not worthy of it, because of you, because of your name, because of your promise, because you promise the Jews will live forever and will and will take over the world and teach the world and have olam haba eternally. You promise, and even if I mess up a little bit, Hashem, you have to. You have to save me because I can't have the enemies saying that they were right, and 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 even if an individual person has to be has to leave has to whatever, but the nation we as a nation we're flourishing, 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 and as you know the very famous story, Dr. Yafa Eliach, in her beautiful book of the stories of the Holocaust, tales of the Holocaust, she says that very moving story about a little boy, and it was the Pesach Seder night, and they were in the or so get it, or they were in a hole someplace hiding, and they made some sort of a make-believe Seder with whatever they could grab together. I don't know if they had even anything. And the little boy asks his father, it's it's the it's the time in the it's the you know the time in the Seder for the Manishtana for the four questions, and this little boy is alive with his father, and that's all there is, just the father and the little boy. And he says the Manishtana by heart, and then he says, Tati, can I ask you another question? And the father says, Of course. And he says, are we going to be alive for next year, Pesach? And the father said, I don't know if we're going to be alive. I don't know if you're going to be alive. And I don't know if I'm going to be alive. But for next year, Pesach. But somewhere in the land, somewhere in this world, there's going to be a Jew who's going to be alive. And he's going to have a son. And he's going to be alive. And he's going to ask his father the same exact questions that you just asked me. Somewhere in the world, next year, this Seder is going to happen. I don't know who, if it's going to be us, if it's going to be, but for sure, there's going to be a Seder next year. For sure, they're going to be children and parents and doing the same thing that we've been doing for 3,333 years. Really, the 5,784 years that the world has been. So David Amel says, you can't leave me because they're going to say they were right. They should be embarrassed. Yevoshim is to be humiliated. Yichlu, they should be destroyed. Sotnei nafshi, the word sotnei is from the word satan. Those who are uh, uh, opposing my nefesh, my soul. They should be full of humiliation and embarrassment. Those who wanted to hurt me, those who want to hurt the Jewish people, will be full of regret and humiliation and sadness and embarrassment. And those are the easiest words. I need like stronger words than humiliation. 
like, I don't know, what's a stronger word than humiliation? They should have that. Why? Just for their intentions of trying to harm me. That's how Hashem is going to measure. Hashem is going to measure how much they try to harm a Jew, and that's how they will be taken out and destroyed. Okay, my sweetie pies. So let's say hi to everybody in this beautiful to be shot. Oh, wait one second. I want to see people. One second, wait. That no, is and I can take Hala so I can have some Almain. Oh, who said that? Who's on? Who just Haley, one second. Hayley. I didn't get that. Wait, let me see my phone first. First, we say thank you to Rebbe Sandov for starting with the class. And hi, Pauline, good morning. And hi, Marcel, good morning. And hi, Samantha, good morning. And hi, Nomi, good morning. And hi, hi Sharon. Sharon, good morning. And hi, Ginny, good morning. And hi, Zoom user, good morning. And hi, Geraldine, good morning. And hi, Rebecca, good morning. And hi, Nechama, good morning. And hi, Lucy, good morning. And hi, Sarah, good morning. And now, Hi, Aviva Ro. I don't see the, the... Up until now, I saw faces. Now, hi, Aviva. And hi, Golda. Hello. Did, I'm in my... Hi, in my shirt. And hi, Mrs. Singer. And hi, Shella. And hi, Shulamit. And hi... Thank you very much. Who else? Wait. Who else? Oh, I lost you again. On a second. Who didn't I say hello to? I, I have two people in the bottom. I don't see their names. Lucy and Katie. Okay. Hi to everybody. And let's see, are you there? Haley, I don't see you. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. I might be Zoom user. I don't know if my name is on the phone. Oh, there you are. Okay, one second. Let me find Zoom user. I saw that. Before. There you are, Zoom user. Yes, there I see you in your beautiful uh, thing that you're wearing. Which I never wear an apron and I always get... Yeah, but I'm wearing a white jumper, so I must today. Yeah, okay. I'm also wearing light. Thank you, Zvar Hinda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But Shama sees the way. Stay on. She's going to make a bracha. We're going to say I'm into her okay. bracha. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kedishanu Mitzvosa Vatsivanu Lahafrish Chala Min Chaita. Amen. 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 And this is for um, Amen. This is for Noah Basaliora, but she should be released very, very soon. Today, now. Amen. <laughs> Thanks. All of them, Amen. every single one of the hostages, every single one of the chayalim should be held. Amen. Every single one of the yeah. people in every hospital, every Jew in any hospital in the world should have full shleim. My granddaughter should have full shleim. She has the flu. Uh, I'm get to yeah. And for my soldier that I'm diving for, Gilad Vanan Ben Dina. And anybody else who needs a full shleim, everybody and all the Amen. Hashem should just destroy Amalek. Amen. Bring Mashiach. Mashiach now. Bring the base Hamikdash. Bring Tchias Hamesa, the revival of the dead. It's going to be such an amazing experience. What puzzle do we get to? Let me see. Eh, okay, we, I'm going to start Yud Gimel again next week, even though we did it, but I wanted to tell you more about it. So, Bezrat Hashem, you should have a beautiful Tubishma and a beautiful Shabbos. And this is Shabbos Shira, and it's the Shabbos where we split the Red Sea. Hashem should split everybody's Red Sea. Hashem should split everybody's barriers. Whatever's the barrier, Hashem should just split it, make it dissolve, and we'll walk through to Eretz, into, into Eretz Yisrael, Be'ezrat Hashem, into good things. I would love to hear what you're all making for Shabbos. I look at I, some of you, I say, oh, I, last time I spoke to you, you were telling me you have this guest and that guest, you were telling me all the meats that you make and all the things that you make. are you okay? I just see part of you, maybe. I don't know. Ah, okay, Be'ezrat Hashem. Everybody should be well, and strong, and feel good. And... Ah, live to see Mashiach Tzidkenu. That's all we need to see. And all the tzaddikim. I'm telling you, ladies, tzaddikim, they're a different, they're a different species. There's something else that's so elevated. And we're so lucky that we have connections to tzaddikim in this world. We're so, so lucky. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Let's open up our hearts to love, loving each other more and more. You guys are so good with each other. I know your community is such chesed, so much chesed, so much chesed. And all the Jews are so much chesed. We should love each other, forgive everybody, and shalom al Yisrael. That's right, Hashem. Okay, good Shabbos, everybody. So now I have to end the meeting for everybody. That's how it works here. So Thank I'm going to end the meeting for Thank all. You Thank you. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Shabbat shalom Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for always.
Thank you, Robinson's daughter, for always enhancing my Shabbos cooking. It's always so nice. That's why I'm always off and I'm wearing my snooze, which I don't always wear, which I don't wear. I'm always in the I'm always in the cycle. And I'd like to say that we always say our brockers out loud at home. And I feel it brings a lot of we well, we went to I went to Brockers party thirteen years ago and since then we've always made the brockers out loud to say our main. And I think it brings a lot of brocha to the house. It does, Aviva. It really, really does. It um, really, a really... question. A question. Um, do, should one also make one's brachas aloud when one is on one's own? Because I always do it more when, when we have someone around to say on main. I know. You should say it even if nobody's around to say on main. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's uh, the next stage to improve on. Listen, okay. then the angels that are around you say on main. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay, brilliant. Will do. Next stage. Thank you so much and good job. Good job. As always said, it kind of gives me like a time frame. I've got to get XYZ done whilst I'm listening to your share and it kind of it kind of makes you work it makes you work really effectively. So, yeah. Thank you. And and hearing you, how nice. Okay. So, you, so, you, 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 thank you saying that for Aviva. You did I didn't say hi to you, you did Sugarman, so hi to you. And so I didn't say your name. And hi, Mrs. Singer again. And yeah, I, I look at you cooking and I'm thinking, no, I should be cooking. But okay, I'd much rather be talk, talking to her than cooking. I mean, you're actually. inspiring. You're inspiring the Shabbos food. What do you I mean? Think I that's mean that's that's Rosh Hashem. That's Rosh Hashem. Good Shabbos. 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 Good Shabbos.